Hey everybody, I'm Spectacular, the Silver Stack, and I'm here with Coin Guy to shop in Spring Hill, Florida. And uh, listen, we're gonna give him a tip in his new tip jar because we want some advice and some information from Guy about what's going on at this Gotta time. Gotta try and make ends meet. <laughs> it's tough, uh, right? Hello, every world, everywhere. Uh, the world's got a little crazier. And look what I got. You got all kinds of weird things I've noticed in the store today. We got we got to do a lot of running around. What is this? Look at this. Oh, what is this? Is this something you made yourself? Come on, man. You hyping yourself I got to get a chain on this. <laughs> Bop it around? No, the kids told me, hey, we got this email. And you won some kind of award. Really? And uh, we looked into it and, yeah. So we said, yeah, send it to me. We'll take it. That's a great award. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Well, congratulations. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That is cool. All right, so what, what's been going on in the shop? What's what's the common theme these days? Uh, fear. People buying silver up. Uh, I moved about 600 ounces of bars. Probably 700 with some rounds and eagles. For me, that's a lot. Because as I said, I'm, we're not bullion dealers. We're rare coin dealers. And uh, we moved a bunch of silver bars. And I could have moved... If I had 30 ounces of one ounce, bar, uh, one ounce golds, I would have moved them all in 20 different deals. Everybody's looking for one ounce here, two ounces there, and I just don't get, nobody's selling the gold. A little bit of silver, mo one source gave me most of my silver, and most of that is gone now. I'm down to like 150 ounces. Uh, people so are fearful. People are worried about what? What's going on overseas? Absolutely. Yeah. And where this can escalate into. And the same theme, I had a guy in the other day. This is my last uh, gold coin. And he gave me a Cougaran. That was probably Thursday. And I was gone within an hour. Uh, he had a tube, and that was the last coin that fell out of it. Sold it. Well, they need the money. They got, you know, you've got the bills coming in on housing and things of that nature. And people are not prepared for it. The scary part uh, is, guy, he sold you his last Cougaran. What happens next? That's what I said. And I've had that more, many instances. Some people I just don't see anymore because they already gave me their last coin. Um, That's sad, man. This came from a builder. He cashed that in the other day. Yesterday, actually. On Credit Suisse? Because he needs some extra cash. He said, I don't know, I hear both sides. You know, they're building everywhere, but he's a custom builder. He said business is way off. He said, people are pulling back. Um, and the other big thing is you can't find anybody who's willing to work. You know, but he wants to work two days a week, three days a week. You know, they only want to work until they run out of money and then they'll work two more days. They must all live in their parents' basements. I don't know what the story is. But uh, well, you got to live in your parents' basement these days because uh, rent's so expensive. <laughs> yeah, but they said the housing, they can't afford housing either. It's gotten absolutely crazy. I don't get it. What, uh, all right, so silver's been, you know, hot. Anything mm -hmm. else coin-wise? Any certain coins been hot? I moved a lot of those coins we showed last time, the, um, the ancients okay. and the, uh, the early coins. Let me touch on something. I know I, I got a couple of those ancients from me. I really appreciate it, too. They're pretty cool. See now. What do we got here? These are ones that didn't sell yet. Okay. We sold half of them. But you see coins like this? Yeah. I've had people comment where they're shaved or clipped. You gotta realize these things are made medieval, some of them, and they're not all gonna be perfect. And this is a time when they would shave off some silver. A little bit of silver would have gotten you bread or something to eat. And even in America, you hear, you'll see uh, you'll see a two and a half dollar gold piece where they'll say the, ed the edges have been shaved. They would shave a little gold off the edge of a gold coin. And if you get five coins and you do that, that little bit will melt. Maybe you can get a dollar for that piece of gold. And in a time when a person made a quarter a day, that made a difference. It's a big deal. These were not perfect times. You know, some of them, they're, they're rough. Um, just to let, you know, give a shout out to some people. Um, some of them are not going to be perfect. But they, you know what? As I see it, they have character. Now, they started making like uh, reeded edges and designs on edges of coins to kind of thwart that. To thwart counterfeiting. And the, the clipping and the and you shading, would know. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just to let people know, I ran out of silver ancient, but I found another half a page I had stuck underneath another page. 
This is the last. Can we break one out of the? Just so I can see it. Looks better if I'm holding it up right here to the camera. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's so cool, isn't it? Yeah. I love how like how the relief is on these old ancients. I mean, some of these are incredible. Is that like an oxymoron, old ancient? Yeah. <laughs> you see how even when you look at a piece like this, not perfectly round. And what's cool too is when you see those gold ancients and they look like they were minted today. Oh yeah. You know? They'd... Oh yeah, I've seen them at big shows. Now when you look at this, you see along the edge here, you see how this pitted here because that's the metal. It wasn't melted or kneaded right. And when it's heated and hit, it's split it in places. So you're going to have imperfections in these coins. Yeah. That's just to uh, give people a heads up. It's the way it and is. And we do still have some left. Okay. Um, but they... Uh, well, if this is what you have left, I mean, you don't have... You went through a lot of them. That's yeah, we quick. went through at least half of them, maybe more. I still have some of the ancients left, the lower grade ones, that I sell in lots of like 10. A lot of Constantine stuff. Um, you think any of this stuff, if somebody was to grab one, it would be worth their time having it sent off just to have encapsulated and kind of protected? That's like I told the person. I said, I had a number of gold coins, Byzantine gold certified, and a lot of them will come back bent, uh, bent, clipped. It affect the price some, but 90% of the value is still going to be there. It's the coin is from the 5th century and it's a gold coin. Or this coin is 400 BC. That's what, you know, I compensate the price, but it's still going to, I, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's up to the people. They they look, maybe it would look better in plastic, but, you know, they get $50 a coin. Yeah. You know, if you pay $35 for a coin, it ain't worth 50 The math just isn't there. I just justify it as a way to, like, kind of protect the piece a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to grab that piece and drop it or have another piece scrape over top of it and be like, oh, no, you know, this thing survived for 2,000 years and I ruined it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I also yeah, yeah. picked up what I did pick up. I'm just going to snoop in the case while you're picking up stuff. What do you well, have? Okay. as I said, we're moving a lot of silver. Okay. This is a 20-piece set. Okay. This is the 20-piece set of silver eagles. From 86 to 2005, 2005. Okay. In the case, all 69s. For those of you who don't know, the 86 is the key, the 94 and the 96 are the keys. These sell for about 70 a piece. They're like $65 a piece raw. And these are first strikes. And well, these, this one is. Well, this one was, yeah. yeah Most wow. of them don't have that. Most of them are just, they're just the brown label ones. Right. But I have a number of these, and I'm selling this complete set for $825. Um, you're looking at, once you take off the key dates, these gray sheet for $1,000. That's pretty good. Gray sheet, 69 is 1000 825 and that pays the credit card and the shipping. That's a super good deal, guys. Well, I have a few sets, so I can, uh, I can satisfy a few people with that. That's cool. So, okay, then, I mean, I guess this is a good time. If people want to, I'll put your information down in the description mm -hmm. and they can get a contact with you that this way. This is like that. And the other thing I've That's been cool. thinking about is... Um, you're always keeping it different. I mean, you're changing it up. You're offering people different things. That's pretty cool. Well, I'm thinking, you know, winter is coming. You know, I think there's some snow storm supposed to hit the Midwest now or something like that. Winter is coming. This isn't Game of Thrones, okay, but John Snow. you get three feet of snow out there, <laughs> and what do you do? This is when you start buying stuff to look through. I don't have any foreign coins and bags right now. I've gone through a lot of it, but I do have stuff like this. So you're saying that now that people are going to be stuck inside, they're going to be coin collecting, looking for look their for stuff. Areas. You look for odds and ends like that. I've taken apart a lot of proof sets because I salvaged the silver. Because we still have a lot of copper nickel. But these are all proof pennies. Wow, those are shiny, guy. Well, they're proof pennies. That looks amazing in that jar like that. These proof nickels. So we'll sell these by the hundreds. Guy. These are 75 cents each. These are $1.10 a piece. 
Um, I always love the you know the proof. And then you look for errors. So you pretty. look for whatever you may get. Guys, those look great in those jars. <laughs> they do. I also have the uh, the proof Sacagaweas. I'm selling a roll of twenty five for fifty five dollars. It's a little over two bucks a piece. You look them up in Gray Sheet, they're anywhere between three and eight dollars. That's awesome. So you know, just something. I think this is cool. It's kind of shiny. Yeah, it looks pretty like that. I mean. Shoot, I'd like that as just like a talking piece like up on the shelf somewhere. Right? All of them. <laughs> That's cool. See, I don't throw away nothing. Look at the jars I keep. Oh, I'm the same way. I got my youngest daughter now. She's like, Daddy, can I have that jar? I'm like, get away from my jar. Yeah, Lily was Touching just here. Yeah, she jar. gets all the jars and stuff. <laughs> and these are the Canadian Big Pennies. Comparable to our law of sense. These run 18, well, they're afterwards, but it's 1858. Can I grab one of these? Sure, go ahead. It's 1920. And there's all kinds of dates in here. All kinds. Yeah, this one I just picked up. One 1881 Canada. H. This is probably a three, $4 coin. Really? Yeah, I sell these for a buck and a quarter each. But you gotta buy them in quantity. I want, you know, I wanna sell 75 or buy them all. You know, we can come out to a number. And we talked about this before. Your Something goal to play with. is to move inventory. Exactly. So you price it nice and fair and cheap. And when it accumulates like this, it's time to, uh, yeah. you know, I figure it's time to put it out. As a coin dealer, what good is this doing you? Well, right. it, I have so many groups of things like this. We ran a special. I got a phone call today about it. And we had run out at the time, but I had the commemoratives. We had like 500 of them in a bucket. Mm -hmm. We sold out. Well, I've accumulated more. A guy ordered a bunch today. He's sending me a check. So just so you know, 25 bucks a piece. And, um, Let me see some know. of these. Let me see what we're working with here. You're not going to get all certified. These are your, your uh, modern commemoratives? These are modern commems. These would be... Are these 90% silver on these? These have the same silver content as the old silver dollar. Okay. You've got Ellis Island. You've got... Uh, and they've changed it now, right, to where everything's triple nine. Yeah, now. You got everybody here. But yeah. I was trying to, I'm looking to sell these in lots of 10. It might just be me, guy, but I think that the 90% silver coins, they look better than triple nine for some reason. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It just, it appeals to the eye better. I've, oh, got, like I've got enough here for probably four sets. That's cool. They made so many different ones too, huh? Yeah, 20, they, Christmas is coming. I'm looking at stocking stuffers. That's the same thing like I sold a couple of a bunches of those, uh, the ancient coins, or a pastor gets one for Christmas. I get a lot of calls they want the biblical. I've got another 10 that I'm not, that I've got to get, I'm probably going to get certified. Uh, Tiberius, uh, Octavian, um, some pretty high price ones. I want to put them in uh, slabs. I got a Nero. He's kind of a fun guy. Don't get on his bad side. He so, might just feature the lions. What does it say? The inventor of Braille? It must be, right? Lewis Braille. Yeah. I guess that's how I know. <laughs> what a dumb question. But I got these, these cool, again. How, much, how much are these? 25 bucks a piece. Can we see some more of these? Guy, if you're gonna have people going like, I want this. No, it's gonna be one. whatever I get. Yeah. You can't have all the certified. Um, don't mistake this for certified, but this is the Lincoln one, mm -hmm. and this one goes for like 32 or 35. Uh, this this plastic is not the real. This is PCGS. I, yeah. I mean, I'll try to throw one of these in, maybe even one of these, but. Uh, you're not going to get all the PCGS ones. To be fair about these, uh, you know, almost like garage graders, these companies like this, mm -hmm. um, I did some research on one of these garage graders. A guy had them uh, cracked out and sent to NGC, I believe it was, or PCGS. And PCGS NGC actually gave it a better grade than the garage graders did. It can go either way. Yeah. It and, can go and, either and way. both times that they did it. And I was like, I think okay. that's West Point. Yeah, it's super cool, isn't it? Nice variety here, guy. Pretty bird. Look at the rose. Careful, because every rose has its thorn, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the rose. Oh, ship on a coin, guy. There ship on a coin. And I like how they tied it in with with the uh, space shuttle there. Uh-huh. That is cool. That's our 
that's our uh, old way of getting around, and this is going to be the future right there, right? If we make Fantastic. it. If we make it. What do you mean by that, guy? Yeah. <laughs> Things are looking a little bleak out there sometime. You know, it's funny because my wife went up to New York today, and I said, with everything that's going on in the world, I told her, try to get to New Jersey. If anything stupid happens, because we've got stupid going on all over the world right now, and things that are happening that I just don't trust at all. Too much coordinate, coordinated chaos. They have a theory in China, and it's called chaos theory. I think it was Mao that did that. You create chaos all over the world, and that's when you strike. And I think we're looking, this could be orchestrated with the things that happened over in the Mideast in the last week. They orchestrated all those attacks. Uh, it goes back to, we talked about the Templars last time. Somebody at a time when the only way you're going to get messages around was on horseback, they had to have sent those messages out a month earlier to all over Europe to coordinate attack on Friday the 13th. So people kept secret. So who knows what can happen. I was just listening, the news said 2,000 uh, Chinese were caught coming across the border in the last 13 days. Where are they coming like, from what border? Like, They're where? coming across the Mexican border. So 2,000. Huh. And before that, you had 20,000 last year. Military age. You know, maybe I'm a science fiction person, but other people on TV are talking about this could be a coordinated attack, saboteurs, when China decides to make a move. That's and I weird. hope, you know, I hope it doesn't come to pass, but if they make a move, they may not just stop at, uh, you know, Taiwan. They might just go Philippines, Hawaii. Goodness gracious. Who knows? Well, we're stretched pretty thin. You know, they got us stretched all over the world, and evil is all over the place. I think that's why people are really, really scared right now. They're getting back into metals because, I mean, you have all this money that we dished out to Ukraine causing some issues here with, you know, some of the prices we're paying. And now we have more, you know, effort and uh, stuff and money going to Israel. I mean, like, you want to help well, everybody, but my know, goodness. We're funding. Now, people can look at this anyway, well, stick to coins. But, you know, things happen in the world affect coins, gold and silver. And my country. Um, you've got so many things happening all over the world that it creates strife and fear. And I feel that this time you have to be for America. If you took a job as a congressperson representing a state, I don't want to see you jumping up and down trying to defend Hamas. You're a representative of Michigan or whatever state you're in. You swore an oath to defend that state in this country. Not your your heritage. You may have feelings for it, I understand, but you're out there legislating against what this country needs. Yeah. And I, those people need to be dealt with. I mean, it's, I, it's just insane. We've talked about it a few times, Guy, where people say, like, don't get political, but, you know, the fact of the matter is coins and everything are affected by politics, and that's why you see the different faces that you do on different coins, because... That's usually the winning side. I mean, well, like I say, well, they say the victors write history. Um, you saw those pages I put out last time, a couple of weeks ago. Those coins are covered in blood. History ain't nice. You know, you had 23, 23 centuries of coins there. Things happen. Kingdoms come and go. Um, you know, all you could do is position yourself and try to stay ahead of things, but. America is still the strongest, best hope for, for the world. That's how I see it. Not just because I'm American, but I am. But I'm <laughs> proud of that. You know, we're not perfect. No. Our history isn't perfect. But show me a country that doesn't have bloodshed in its history. No, it doesn't exist. I mean, it just that's just, yeah. as I said, that's just the way it was. Um, what other kind of new coins you got in here? Let's go back to coins for a minute. We're just going to bounce around. That's what we do, right? We just bounce I around. I got a lot of this over here. You got a lot I of this over here? I picked up a lot right. of uh, proof quarters, the uh, state quarters. Can we talk about some stuff on your shelf here in a little bit, too? Sure. Is that okay? I got a new rack over there because Susan wanted the other rack that had wheels for our walk-in oh. closet. 
Guy, that's a nice rack. Oh, she stole that. We had to put that together. Yeah, that's a really nice rack. It's like 40 bucks. Has another shelf, but got too high. I didn't want to use it. Yeah, that's a wonderful rack. Yeah. Um, okay, so you're here. Uh, this was cool. Yeah, we saw this. This is cool. Can we, on the film there? What do we got here? Proofs. There's a whole stack of proofs. So you got a three proof set and one. That's really nice. Beautiful toning there, guy. Yeah, pretty. That This comes from the old books. Now you've seen, you know, you see these oh, types yeah. of books. Because it has like a little hole right there. It would probably go like some kind of binder thing. Let's see if I have one of the really old books over here. Yeah. Actually, you got books like this. Hmm. I think these are 63. These are 59. These are from 59. I think these were from 39. This? These have a hard brown outside shell. These are old coin books. I like them. Th these are the pre, pre, you know, before the Whitman and, Ka and now you have Danska when you can find them. Yeah, when you can find Danska. Yeah. But this is what this is. And you can see from the colors, this has probably been sitting in here for 30 years. I, I told Guy... Uh, when we were looking at these off the uh, video, I said that his price was way too cheap on this thing. I think, my personal opinion. It's pretty. It's super nice. And the toning on those is great. Now here's some, some people may need the half dollar to put their Kennedy set together. Okay. Here's the half and the quarter. I mean, these sets are like $23 a piece. You're the coin guy, man. You got everything. I mean, if you need the half dollar, it'll cost you 15 alone. This is going to cost you seven or eight dollars. So right there's your twenty-three. You get the dime, the nickel, and the penny for free. God knows I got enough jar full of pennies and nickels now. <laughs> you got everything somebody needs. And there's I... stacks of the proof quarters for different series. dates. Different dates, stacks, proof quarters. Complete five piece sets. Beautiful. Stuff just keeps coming in. This week's been a little quiet. I think, as I said, you know, I think people are at home and they're watching drama. Um, you know, it's scary. Oh, you, think, you think we're back to watching the news again? Oh, yeah. We stopped they, for a little bit. They don't know, you know, people <laughs> worry. These I got. These yeah, are kind of cool. Can you break those out, actually? These are pretty. I had two others. They're already gone. So NGC slabbed three coins at once there. Three coins set. I had the 86 in one. Oh, God, that's cheap. I bet you it costs you 60 bucks to slab that. I guarantee it. Maybe more. Yeah. And people, if you don't realize, the pre-2000 peace dollars, I mean, the pre-2000 Silver Eagles all have a premium. I mean, if I'm selling Silver Eagles for 28 or 29, probably a 90, an 88, they're going to be like 31, 32 dollars each. Anyway, they're always about three dollars more. And these are all certified. These are beautiful. That's I cool actually one. have a roll of 86s, which is a key date. That would be a nice gift for somebody to buy for their husband or their father. Is that a hint? Yeah. A thousand bucks. <laughs> a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. These are nice. Uh, there's 20 in there, and they go for 60 a piece raw. So Listen, I get a roll of 20. You're the coin guy. You got the loops. You got the microscope. You have all the tools. How hard is it to tell a like a modern 69 from a 70. <laughs> I think it's a matter of whether the person had their coffee the day before. Some coins will pop. I mean, I looked at, uh, for instance, when you look in that case I just showed you, you get a spent, now they changed the whole process. Round 91. When you look at some of these, they take your breath away. You take my breath away. Look at that. And these are the 69s? These are 69s. These pop. Why isn't that a 70? See, this one's slightly duller. You can see the difference. Well, I can. This looks great. Mm-hmm. But, you know, why isn't it a 70? Because I'm not heritage sending it in. Right. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> You've already done it. 
You've already done it. I'm it's, not the only one who believes it's that. It's just such a minor thing, and it's funny how much the price goes up oh, from yeah. a 69 to a 70. You get a 69 to a 70, there's thousands, thousands of dollars are involved. You know, as I said. Oh, for like this set right here? Yeah. Oh, I see. This set in a... Um, this, this set this is 69. Right what do we got? This is gray sheet. The gray sheet, okay. This, this set's a thousand bucks in 69. In 70. Just the 90 is $3,200. The 94, $6,500. For one coin. For one coin. Get out of Dodge. 6000 I don't know what this heads up to. Let's see. If I computate fast. Five, seven, ten. Then the ninety-nine is eight thousand. Eighteen, nineteen. Wow, twenty-four, thirty. Over over forty thousand. Sure. North of forty thousand. Sure. Set of of seventies. That's crazy. yours for for eight twenty. People underestimate coin collectors, man. That's that's a whole vehicle right there, brand new, no miles on it from the lot. <laughs> it's you know it it gets uh it gets crazy but and I have a few of these sets so you know, it wouldn't be the first person gets them all unless they buy them all. Let's let's go back over here real quick. You mind? Sure. I got uh, something else I really kind of. So this is this is your shelves here that I saw. I saw this trick pony. Tell me about this trick pony right there. Right there. This? Yeah. I bought this at a lawyer's office. Uh, I buy estates and I go around. And this was on the table. And they were going to toss stuff. And I said, no, I'll take that. What do you do? You put the money you in the, the horse's mouth? The horse's mouth. You pull this, it falls in there. And it goes into the bank. Yeah. And these are heavy, right? This is all cast iron? This is cast. Just don't drop it. Okay, I'm going to drop it. Yeah. That's awesome. I just thought it was kind of cool. I did. I Maybe I'd give it to a little guy or something, but he might just hit his sister in the head with it. Jeez. And then I'll get in trouble behind that. <laughs> this uh, came with those over there. I hadn't had one of these before. I thought this was kind of interesting. Oh. I didn't know NGC did the box. I think I need a lock for this. You have the locksmith? Somebody wow. call the locksmith. Mm -hmm. And these slide right in here. Oh, the big boys. Oh. Okay. I thought that was kind of interesting. That is kind of interesting. I got my uh, coins back from PCGS. Not over, overly happy with the whole situation, but I love the box. <laughs> I was happy to get one of the free boxes. Huh, free. How many did you send in? Uh, I don't know. It was like a handful, like eight. Okay. One came back uh, without any kind of grade whatsoever. Kind of frustrated with that one, but whatever. Uh, what's this little bank right there? What's the bank? It's like a cash register bank thing. What is that? This came from the same source. That's just, it's not cast iron, is it? It's made of metal. You press that and the money goes in, and I think it's supposed to add it. And these are just little knickknacks that you get. This was at the lawyer's office. You know, somebody dies 92 years old, and they got beside the, you know, the coins, the jewelry. You get all these case up, sometimes hours at a house, and I'm going through six jewelry boxes, but there's all kinds of odds and ends. And, mm. you know, the, sometimes everything that's left is going to be tossed. And it's, if you want to take it, so I take a couple. As like coin collectors, we don't typically just collect coins only, do we? Yeah, we tend to collect everything. <laughs> I wait, it's like my wife said, you never throw nothing out. This is an extension of my man cave. Yeah. And she's pretty much right with that's that. That's the fun. I mean, it's, it's history. That's that's what we kind of collect. I love history. You know, yeah. whether whether I have an, you know, uh, an old weapon or an old coin or an ancient, I can appreciate it. You know, I see the value in it. I just love the character of the coins. It's like I said, when you look at these coins and some of them are a little beat up and shaped, but you know what? Look at the character. How many hands have those had passed through in 500 years? Right. You know. And you'd think, you know, a lot of those coins, I mean, could have been in somebody's possession and they're off to war or whatever, and then that person gets slayed, and then the next person picks up his, his booty and... Goes slayed. about his day. <laughs> Look at Slade. They slayed him. Not anymore. Actually, man. I've got to. Uh, I'm going to be talking about. I got to go see the. Uh, I've been invited to talk to the Widows Club at our local church. Oh, okay. Um, I think I'm going there on the fourth. 
whatever the Friday is, not, not, not next Friday, Friday after Halloween. And you're going to bring some widow mice. So they want me, well, they asked me to come and talk to the widows. No, I'm going to bring different things to show, show the, uh, the ladies. I was going to bring this. I thought this was going to be fun. And I'm going to play with them because, you know, I get not so much sarcastic, but I like to pull a smile on them. The old and, uh, note. Yeah. Excuse me. Sure. Take your time. But I'm going to show these and I'll say, well, some of you girls will remember when you pass this for money. You think they'll remember this? 1780? <laughs> I might get hit you with a cup of tea. That? Ouch. It's cool, though, isn't it? I think those are cool. I have two others at home. They're the more valuable, but they're pretty cool. And that's a $2 bill. Yeah, you sold me one of these. and it's, I just love how, like, all the hand signatures are This one there. doesn't say, you know, to counterfeit his death. That one doesn't have it. But I bet it was around that time, though, guy. I bet it was an unspoken word that you, you don't know. Well, they knew around. that. It's, you know, they, in those days, I remember going down in the Dudgeons. I was in, um, by William and Mary College. Oh, 25 years ago. And you went down there and they showed you the dungeon. And um, and they said in those days, if you were locked up for more than 12 months, they hung you. It was cool. It was considered cruel and unusual punishment. And they would just hang you. You know, crazy times. You stole something, they hung you. Yeah. I mean... Nice swift death. Yeah. Bada bang. Now, you know, you can steal half the store. Somebody does a tally and you're free to go. Nice swift death. The taxpayers aren't Nebraska paying all kinds Terri of money. Nebraska <laughs> Territories. That's an interesting note, too. The city of Omaha. Now, these have character. That's how I look at those. These are fun. Pretty good grade right there, too, guy. Yeah. It's only, it's only printed on one side. Exceptional paper quality. So it's exceptional for, the, for that bill. Only one side. You can see the ink from the signatures bleeding through. That's so yeah. cool. One, 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 it says. That's awesome. Yeah. This is something that just, just came in recently? Uh, I probably had this last time, but I think it was over there. I move things around because this oh. way people see them. It looks fresh. It looks new. And then maybe I sold three. I know I sold three or four pieces over there. Tactics uh, of a coin dealer. Monday. Well, it's, you know. Can you, can you talk about the history of what made the coin guy? Can we talk about that? Um, you always talk about, like, Rubenstein's, right? Yeah. Is that really, you learned everything there? I learned, I learned from a number of places. We did, I didn't belong to any coin clubs when I was on Long Island. Uh, I started collecting when I was 10. I've told you the story, the first 50 cent piece I got. Um, I still have that over here. Yeah, it's in case. Over here somewhere. Here it is right here. Are you selling it yet? No. I've been offered money for it. I won't so you got that. this first coin, and you're just like, okay, I like it. I was this. in fifth grade, and the kid showed it to me on a Friday, and I said, uh, I want this. I was 10 years old, and I said, um, I wanted the coin, and um, give me the Monday. And I went over to the, the school. If, if you know the city schools... The elementary schools behind them were all concrete. That's where kids play baseball, they play everything. And then right behind the school yard is a park usually. And we had a park. And as we'd go to play basketball, play Scully, all the games we used to play then. Frisbees were new then. This is like 1964, 65. And um, I went through the wicker baskets that all the older kids would drink Friday night, Saturday. And I took soda bottles, beer cans, cashed them all in for two cents a piece. That's how I made my money. My, we didn't get allowances. You didn't go home to mom and dad and say, oh, hey, here's a really cool coin I like. Kid has it at school. I'd like to get it. You, Why you, you worked waste for your my money. time? Wow. Yeah, I wouldn't waste my time. Because you wouldn't have got it. No. I might have <laughs> got a whack in the head. That would be a more probable Oh, well, you got to collect coins? You better get out there in the coal mine. Smack. But I, uh, <laughs> I picked up stuff and I bought that coin with it. And I was hooked. I couldn't do much else for a couple of years until I was about 14 when I got my paper route. And then I got two paper routes. And then I started saving all the silver coins, as many paper boys used to do in the late 60s. And uh, I saved my money. I saved my coins. And then I moved out to Long Island. And then when I got to be 17, I actually started buying coins. I had a real job. 
And I started going to Rubenstein's in 1972. Was it pretty much just Rubenstein's at the time? Were there other coin dealers around? Yeah, Miller's around? Mint, who's still around. Okay. They were, they were much further out. Uh, but I was, it was in Bayshore, and I was in Lindenhurst. And I could get, I could get there, you know, I could get up to, uh, to Bayshore. And, um, and I started going, I was talking, I was reminiscing with somebody the other day who I vaguely remember. I remember this guy from, and I'm talking 50 years ago. He was different looking then, of course. Now he's in his early 80s. But he goes, I remember you. And we reminisced about Rubenstein's when they were first on Montauk Highway. And then they moved all from in town all the way down. And then they moved to Sunrise Highway. But this formation is the way they used to have it. They would have the, the newer coins up front like I have under that case. So you have the newer coins and the dealer probably right there? Up front, exactly. Okay. This store is wider and bigger than his was. Yeah. And when you first walked in, it would have a case with all the jewelry. It's like a horseshoe. I mean, yeah, you're it was walking just like into this, a horseshoe. a horseshoe, but smaller. Okay. The middle was maybe eight or ten feet narrower. This this place is bigger. Okay. Uh, they also sold uh, not in the first two stores, but the the last store they had, they would have they sold safes. They went through different phases. They sold metal detected safes, plus all the coins. And from them, I learned my craft. I watched, and then I started going to the 110 uh, flea market in Melville. And I still talk to Long Islanders who know exactly what I'm talking about. And they, uh, oh, yeah, that's still there, you know, and who's running it now? I remember when Tony Taglia used to run that. I'm going back 50 years. And you walk the floor. And I was the best pocket dealer there for 30 years. i buy from one dealer, sell to another, and... I went to hundreds of shows there, and I always made money virtually every time. And you could do um, that. You could just go into a, a coin show, find a piece that you're like, oh, I know that's actually a really good deal. Probably yeah. talk them down a little bit. Underrated, whatever the problem might have been. Buy that or, coin. Well, see, I would go to Rubenstein's, and Rubenstein's was very conservative. I could buy Rubenstein coin that he called a very choice AU, and I would take it there and sell it as an unk. Because it was... You know, once again, coin grading was subjective. He was too conservative. And sometimes I remember selling a shield nickel that I bought at Rubenstein's for 200 and I sold it to a guy at 110 for 280 Bought it Thursday, sold it Sunday, made 80 bucks. And is this That's the, a lot of money. Is this the time, like, before or at the very early stages of, like, the, uh, the third-party graders? Oh, no, this was 1980. Okay. 79, 80. But I still hustled coins... When the grading came out back in 85, 86, and I got people, you know, I remember the old timers telling me, this is never going to last. Coin collectors like to hold their money and handle their money. And this guy was probably my age, but this was thir over 30 years ago. And uh, 35 years ago. I don't know. But uh, obviously, it survived the test of time. Yeah. It's just getting so inundated now with how many different grading services. And honestly, if you send four coins to four grading services, you could get four different grades. And then mix them up and send them to the same groups. But different ones, are diff you get another three different grades. Something I don't love that they're doing now, uh, PCGS, NGC are both doing it. They're pretty much going around buying coins, grading them, and then selling their coins. So they can, you know, to me, that's a There is an deal. absolute conflict of interest. Yeah. And I've seen that. See, that's where you corrupt the game. It's and like, how long is this going to last? We're adding another layer, too, where we're doing these mystery packages. So you don't even know what you're buying, but you're paying extra for the chance to get something that, you know, is very rare to you get. You know, as I said before, it's a marketing ploy. It's to just generate and suck money out of the market. I And I've had arguments with people in discussions and there was something in the paper the other day about uh, using, um, you know, like photo grade or facial recognition to grade coins. I, I argued that seven, eight years ago. And a friend of mine said, oh, this grading company spent $10 million perfecting it. No, they spent $10 million, bought the, pa the patents and buried them. Let's not be kid. Don't kid yourself. You get a grading company that gets an average of $30 a coin, and they get a half a million coins. They're generating, what, 15, 20 million a year. And they, what, what is, they just have employees that work for them.
Yeah. They make money hand over fist. I, as I said, you, there's too much, too much room for error. Too but we work with what we can, and now you've got CAC out there. I mean, Maron. I, I guess CAC is, uh, they were kind of closed their, um, their subscription down. They weren't like, allowing new members to come in, but now I guess they're opening that up. So people might want to check out CAC if they are interested. It's business. <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's, it's business. It's another place. I just sold a cat coin. Uh, I got an MS-66 Oregon Trail oh, nice. with a cat sticker. A little classic commemorative. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice one. I think my son picked up a couple in 68. He got one at an auction. One is beautiful. Tony. Uh, hey, Brian. He's in Rome right now. One in Rome. One in Rome. Yeah. One day I'll bring in my classic commemorative set so you can check it out and what you think the whole thing why not why not i'll take a look when, at it when you were going uh from like you know your early you're you're buying coins now you're not quite a, a dealer or working at one of these places yet you're just buying coins you're learning and you go into these different shops how were the coin dealers towards you i never went into different shops i only went into rubenstein's oh, okay there were different and shops we just only went into rubenstein's there was you. rubenstein's there was miller's mint too far out I didn't go into places that just bought gold and silver bullion. Uh, there so, weren't that many actual coin stores. How was Rubenstein's when you first started going in? Like the dealers welcoming to you, or how was it? He was more business. Uh, there were two of them in there, and they were more strictly business. But over the course of years, they warm up to you. They used to give you free coffee and cookies when in there, and that's the way it went. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you move from place to place, and toward the end, you're on a first, you know, within a few years, when you show up every Thursday for two, three years, they know who you are. And you're bringing them coins that you pick up, and they make money all for you, and I understand that. Uh, and then after again, decades go by, I've said before, sometimes when the kids were looking for me, on a Thursday morning, they would call Rubenstein's. Mel would answer the phone, it's for you, because the kids knew where I was. And we'd be there shooting the breeze and talking about just like what, what's going on in the world. So you built and a relationship. Cards. Absolutely. Yeah. They would do Christmas dinner every year. And I cooked for one or two of them. And um, it was a nice get-together of people. They, you know, they did pretty well. Rubenstein's was a different animal than me. Because you couldn't go in there and negotiate. There are dealers like that now. You can't go in there and say, well, you know... This coin is two hundred ninety dollars. Would you take two sixty? No, no, no. That's the price. Yeah. Rubenstein's would look at gray sheet, and in those days you had bid and ask. So let's say that that set of uh, silver eagles, a twenty piece set that's certified, it's at thousand bucks. Bid would be a thousand. Ask would probably be eleven hundred. It was usually ten percent higher than what bid was. Ask was higher. That's the retail price. Rubenstein's was 10% over that. Oh, wow. So they made 20% over bid. But that was, you know, that was how they did it. And, you know, in reflection, I respect what they did. And I realized, wow, they did well. Mm -hmm. They had to have done well. I mean, they had about five, five employees. Uh, but they were, you know, they were in Bayshore. And then they were, you know, God, I, I guess they're gone now. Rubenstein's isn't there anymore. Um, you, you've, you've changed your model. 45 years. You've changed your model a little bit from that because you do haggle a little bit. I always um, negotiate. You, you, always, you have a good price starting out. Mm -hmm. Usually you're kind of under whatever, like, gray sheet is for sure. And then we talk from there. You know, I, if I have the room in it, some coins, I get some people come in and I'll say, well... This gold coin is uh, a thousand ten dollars. I'll give you nine fifty. Oh, you want to give me thirty dollars less than gold? <laughs> I can't. There do are that. people like that. Can't do that. You know, a person came in and said, "I give you fifty dollars for this." I said, "I give you fifty dollars to leave." <laughs> you know, I paid more than that. I paid quite a bit more than that. Yeah. You know, some people just want to haggle everything, but when you go to shows, they haggle. Very thin. I remember when I was in the 110, there was only one guy I recall. He would not move. The price is the price. Yeah. He wouldn't do anything. But many, many, 95% of dealers, you can negotiate the price. 
I remember I walked into a coin shop that was in a mall in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and I thought that was so neat to see a coin shop in there. But uh, same thing. The price was the price. We don't haggle here. I said, okay, well, I don't shop here. I got to go. You know, in a kind way. <laughs> I got to go. You know, that's you know, it's like it's, my theory is I don't want to have the biggest inventory, you know, in Spring Hill. But, you know, if I can make a profit, that's, an, you know, I don't be a pig about it. That's the game. And that's just how it is. Can I see but, some of your Morgan dollars, if you don't mind? Sometimes I noticed, I don't know if you noticed this, we do a little haggling guy, yeah. and uh, you tell me the price, and I go, you know what, that's good enough for me. I don't even haggle, I just, that's the price. Let's get my granddaughter the other day. What is this thing? It's Halloween! Oh, that's right. That's right. All Howl's Eve. Well, can I put this video out on, uh, on this Friday? Sure you could. And then, and then boom, it's... People are going to watch this, and then they're actually going to get it, rather than after Halloween. That would, that would yeah, be before Halloween would be good. That would right, work. We'll do that. And now you get Halloween. You get a lot of places in the country, in the world, where they, the Day of Death, which is All Saints Day, All Souls Day, November first, mm -hmm. they walk around with big white cone heads. We look like the Klan, but that's tradition long before the Klan. Spain, um, Mexico, the Day of the Dead. The Day of the Dead. A lot of, you know, a lot of history between dates like this. Halloween goes back to the old pagans and the Druids. I've been to Stonehenge. And when you go to Stonehenge, the only people allowed back there is on Halloween and May 1st. Those are the days that the Druids are allowed back there to do their, you know, their, their worship or whatever they do. Now, when you went to Stonehenge, can you go all the way up to one of them? I did in 91. You can't do it anymore. I was there in 06, and it's roped off. You're not allowed back there. Yeah. Somebody decided to bring a permanent marker mm. and start writing names on it. Probably. Who knows you nowadays? Know? <laughs> I mean, you get crazy people that glue themselves to a Renoir, and, they, you know, it's just disgusting. You see the people that were, like, like these like famous art pieces, like the Mona Lisa, like they were, like, throwing stuff at it and stuff. Now, they got it protected, like, you, you know. You got to, but, I mean... What, where do you come from? What cave did you come out of? How'd you do that, you know? You know, everybody's an oppressor. Everybody's a colonialism. You're a 25-year-old and you want to destroy history? Like, what's wrong with yeah. you? <laughs> well, you don't even know history. <laughs> These are beautiful, by the way, guy. You know, I picked up some nice pieces and I got some other ones up front. This see. one's got some proof feels. Let's, let's, can we break that one out? There we go. It's pretty, huh? I'm getting mostly bullion-related coins right now. Um, I could picked up a couple of those sets of uh, of the Silver Eagles. I picked up a few rolls of, of uh, Silver Eagles. Um, people, you know, people pass away, and I buy the estate. And that's just what happens. How often do you get like a young collector, like maybe like in their 30s, saying, "I'm done"? I'll tell you this. Because of doing this, I got people who are coming in tomorrow. No, they're coming in on Saturday to see me. And those people bring young people with them. My son is now collecting because of you. And that's, I'm doing my job. That's what I want to do. I want to spread knowledge and history and learn to read. And, um, you know, that's, that's what I want to do. I promote the hobby I love. And, uh, and I'm doing my job, and that, that feels good to me. Any of the young folks that. ever trying to get out? What do you mean? Like, you know, sell their collection, like, I'm done collecting. I don't no, wanna, no, know. I don't have that. Yeah. I may get a younger person who may have to let go a couple of things because his wife's pregnant now. Yeah. Oops. But they're not selling because they gave up. Yeah. Um, gotcha. You know, you will find that in the last few months... The market has changed, you know, whereas Silver Eagles used to have a 10 and $12 premium. The Eagles now are more like $5, $6 over. Better. Uh, the same thing with Silver Rounds. You used to get three, four over. You get the buck and a half and two now. Um, the numbers have closed because there's no money out there. The Bidenomics is killing these people out there. I went to the store the other day, and I know how to shop. And I look for sale items. I, I bought... Six or seven items? It's $52. Oh, it's ridiculous. I said, 
Can I see that, Bill? <laughs> and I'm looking at it, and it's, my goodness. I mean, I remember when my mother, when we were kids, and as I said, we got by. My mother had, my father would come home on a Friday, he'd hand my mother $30, and there's five of us. This is in the late 60s. Here is, well, this is the early 70s now, late 60s, early 70s. Here's $30 for food for the week. What could you get now? One piece of steak? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Twenty-something dollars a pound. Yeah. And she had to buy food for the whole week from that. Mm. You know, I remember many a day when there was no more cold cut, and we would, I would have a mayonnaise sandwich. You know, I like mayonnaise sandwiches. Mayonnaise sandwich. Uh, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who knows that. Uh, it just was... And my daddy told me this story that he, I guess he grew up pretty broke too, that he could have one slice of bread and they were allowed to put as much jelly as they wanted on this because I guess they made their own preserves, but there was no peanut butter. So you just have as much jelly on a, a slice of toast as you yeah. wanted. You see, I like, <laughs> I'm more peanut butter and jelly, but I don't like them mixed. I what? never made peanut butter and jelly. Guy. No, no. Oh, I got to grab my heart. This I is like hurting. peanut butter or I no. like uh, a jelly sandwich. I don't like peanut butter and jelly. Guy. Lily, my, my grandchildren, they, they eat them peanut butter. She loves peanut butter and jelly. Wow. Yeah. And little guy likes liverwurst. I was over in Winn-Dixie the other worst? day. Liverwurst? Yeah. yeah. I grew up with it. It was a poor person's food. I mean, but it was like 60 cents a pound maybe. It was cheap. Yeah. You know, and it was basically what it was, liver waste. It was the leftovers from butchering liver, whatever it is. They boiled it, and they made liver worse. But um, that's that. I like liver wish. I, to, I have liver wish with mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. My wife likes liver wish with uh, pickle relish. What about spam? Are you a spam eater? No, never eat spam. Oh. I don't think my parents ever bought it. I ate that a few times growing up. Here's a whole bunch of pocket watches for you. I moved this. I, I did this see that. This used to be on that side. What does this do? This, yeah. this spins? No. Only if I turn it. Oh, you got to turn it. It's not on the back. It's just... I consolidated all of the pocket wa pocket watches. I talked to a pocket watch guy, or well, a watch guy that could fix them, and he says it's really kind of just not even worth trying to fix these things. I guess there's it's really an expensive process. Well, you know, they're not... It is. And you need... And that's a skill set that's gone. You know, who has that skill set? You need a watchsmith. Uh, I mean, we do batteries... We'll do batteries and we'll, you know, we'll put watch bands on for you. Uh, but that's about it, you know. We do jewelry repair. Let's see some more stuff around the shop. You mind? You've got a couple more minutes? Sure. I want to see some history right here with these. Did we see these large since last time? Actually, you know what? Yeah. Let's look at these half dollars. Can we do that? Sure. Half dollars, because they're silver, they pop a little bit better mm. than some of these old copper coins. This dog keeps on going off over here, it's scaring me. <laughs> pretty history guy. Was this like pretty much just one guy coming in, dropping off some oh, stuff? Oh, no, no, no. This is various collections. And quarters, and bust quarters are much harder to find than bust halves. Bust halves were used as backup for paper money. Mm -hmm. They were they kept in bags in the back of safes back in the 1800s, whereas quarters were used every day. People don't realize, I watched Downton Abbey, and I watched The Gilded Age, okay? Now, The Gilded Age, I find very interesting. Now, there's a time of opulence. You'd get a guy who would spend $10 for a cigar where the average family didn't make $10 a, a month, not a week, a month, and they had to get by on. I mean, it was just The Gilded Age. It was like 1870 to World War I. Then the Roaring Twenties came in. Amazing history, huh? Yeah. Any the robber barons. Any 20 cent pieces? Uh, at this time, no. Those are hard to come by, right? It's funny. When I get those, they'll come out of a typeset. I usually can't keep them in the store. Maybe I've had three at one time, but no, I just don't get, uh, I don't get them. And it's the same like trying to get bust, to get the early busts, the guy. draped hair ones, the ones that are pre-1807. You just don't see them. I thought it was pretty cool. I saw this, uh, I, you know, never I know how true this stuff is, but it was an actor, uh, Jack Black. You know him? Yes. So he was saying that uh, he was a coin collector. And he loved the, the flowing hair scent was one of his favorite coins. Now, like, that's kind of cool seeing, like, you know, some big name out there is, you know, Well, what's his name was a big coin collector, too? Uh, Buddy Epson from the Beverly Hillbillies. 
You know who the Beverly Hillbillies uh, are? Of course. I'm not. I'm, I don't know which character was. was he was the old somehow. grandpa. He was the old man. Okay. The tall yeah. grandpa guy. Yeah. He was a big coin collector. The Buddy Epson collection came up, and you you'll see a coin every now and then from that collection. Beverly Hillbillies. They struck oil. Yep. And they became millionaires. Yep. And today they'd be billionaires, probably. Yes, they'd be billionaires. <laughs> Oh, this, this is an interesting guy. I saw this news story saying that the average American is now a millionaire with their net worth. Average. You think that's true? Do they deduct their credit card debt? They, Do they deduct their mortgage? In order to find your net worth, you're supposed to. And that's what the claim was in this particular, you know, all your liabilities get deducted from your, you know, your benefits. Well, when you're saying the average American, are you taking, are you taking the person worth $100 billion and mixing them in with, Ruining the you know, a million people that have 50,000, mix them all millionaires? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I, I question that. I very much question that. You to, know. To be in the positive a million, you know, have a net worth of but a million. But at the that's, same that's time, they tell you half of America doesn't have $1,000 in an emergency. And I believe that. So how is it possible that the average person's got a million dollars? Because you're blending in the people who... You know, make twenty, have twenty and thirty and a billion dollars, with the people who, you know, have barely can get by, and that's how you make everybody a millionaire. I don't, I don't give that credibility. A, a buddy of mine who works really, really hard, makes good money, has a good, you know, hourly wage, does plenty of overtime, getting time and a half. And I said, how's like, how's it going in like the the, the account, the savings account? Like, how are you doing in there? And he goes, I got about three thousand dollars. And I'm like, ooh, like. You could run through that in a month, no problem. I mean, less than a month. And nowadays, people come in when they want to do work around the house, and they just make up numbers. Hey, buddy, I'm not in Queens. <laughs> I mean, I just it's just incredible. We're in Florida. What do you get to paint a room up in New York? A thousand dollars to paint one room? I mean, you know, it's just they want easy money, man. It's just amazing. You do good work, but I just. The wife wants a bathroom cleaned. I said, I'm not paying $500 to clean, to paint a bathroom. I'll, I'll get the, up there on the ladder. To clean it? To paint it. Oh, paint it, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guy. I guess you have to start putting your painting gloves on and start getting to work. I've done all that stuff. I know how to do the cuts and everything. I mean, I did construction with my brother-in-law for 15, 18 years, so I can do a lot of it. It's just I'm getting older, and I just... I don't have the physical strength I had 30 years ago. You're getting older, guy? Get yeah. out of here. Yeah. Come on. The years is rolling in. Come on, man. Next year, we're going to go to a five-day week. Are you really? Yeah. We're going to close Wednesdays starting after New Year's. Well, I guess that's not too terrible because you're just, what, six days a week now, right? <laughs> it was six. So now I'm going to go to a five-day week. Yeah. It's probably better for you. Well... I, mean, I uh, are you really going to take, you know, a day off, or are you just going to go home and play with coins at home? I could do that. <laughs> or, like I said, we'll probably have some appointment. If somebody calls me and says, hey, I got a trunk load of gold, I'll meet you at the store. Yeah, right. You you'll, know. You'll make it happen for that, right? Yeah, we'll make it happen. But <laughs> we're going to we look to go to a uh, five-day week starting next year. Good for and you. then we'll see where we go from there. There's still plenty of uh, opportunity then for people to come by and see you. Five days is Oh, yeah. Sure yeah. Like I said, I get a lot of visitors on Saturdays. Out of town is because they come down here. And uh, and I'm, they come and see us. And I appreciate that. And I moved a few coins this week. They bought a couple of the, uh, the, the uh, spectacular. Oh, our little collaboration there. Yeah. Okay, good. Those are fun pieces, right? Then I have that the shirts, well. too. I give away more shirts than I sell. Guy, when are we going to come out with number two, the whole different one? I don't know. We'll have to get through these first. <laughs> we'll see. you got to be pretty we'll close to getting rid the, of those by now. With, no, I still have quite a few. I don't really push them. Huh? It's Yeah, if they buy it, fine. If not, it's okay. You know, I'm, don't push them. I got this. Oh, you in. showed that off. I was going to buy that off the video. That thing is awesome, isn't it? I just got that. That is I so good. If he just got that, I probably got it Friday. That's cool, guy. I tested it, weighed it. Seems good. It looks like it might have been cleaned at one time, but still in pretty good shape. It's a better year. I mean, you never know. I mean, was this that, coin gets crazy and extra fine. Was that dropped in the ocean at some point? Because it, it looks like right here. Could have been. It looks like some environmental damage, it's which got, means It almost right? looks like it's got stress lines. 
Yeah, this coin is like 300 an extra fine. It explodes the next grade up. I think I told you that one of the coins you sold me that uh, you thought was from some sort of, uh, you know, ocean disaster, uh, it, it came back as saltwater damage. Oh, okay. Which is great. So because that just it was, it was like this. Basically verifies it. And that's what I want because people go like, oh, it's damaged. But no, that's part of history. It was in a shipwreck somewhere. It gives it... It's just like when I'm selling those older, the early coins in the 14, 1500. It gives it character. Yeah. Now it has character. I was super excited to get that. That's like when they said, you're getting happy. How old? No, I have character. You have character now. I had a guy call the other day, <laughs> and he's telling me, I picked up a bunch of really old paper money from the 70s. I said, slow down on that. Very old. 70s. <laughs> Very old. I see that all the time now, is that people are selling like vintage things, and it's from the 80s. And I'm like, oh man, like I'm vintage. <laughs> I'm from the '80s. That's not good. Ay ay ay. It's getting insane. Well, but then. anyway, hang in there. God bless America. And I hope things get better. But God bless America. Before Greatest we go, country in the world. I gave you a tip when we started. Give everybody a tip before we go. Um. On the spot. Save your pennies. Save your pennies. Save your pennies. <laughs> yeah, I sent Tara out today to pick up some bottled water. Better to have it and not need it. That's how I look at it. Then need it and not have it. Amen. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried because I'm concerned about the leadership of this country. Um, just is what it is. Uh, it's just everything is upside down. But God bless America. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Happy Halloween, guy. Thank you very much. Happy Halloween. All right, so guy, what do you have here? What's going on? People come in with uh, sterling candelabras and candle holders, and they say, well, this weighs like a pound. How much you give me for this? And I say, I give you $5 for that. What are you talking about? Well, here's what's in it. This has got a steel rod, and it's full with plaster or resin. And then you've got to peel all of this off. And I've done it many times. You know, try and not get cut. And to be honest with you, it isn't worth the trouble for what you can get out of it. So this is like your, your typical silver-plated yep. stuff. That's what it looks like. Especially the candelabras, like the ones that are up there. The one in the middle, the big one. Uh, the oh, four-prong one. Way up there. That one has got some poles that connect to the ones that hold the candles. Uh huh. That may have $40 in silver, but it probably weighs 7 pounds. The rest of it is just uh, filler. So there's some silver in there, but yeah. they literally... I thought that they were plating like like this bronze is, or, or copper you know, or something. These say sterling that says weighted, and they mean weighted. This stuff is like... This is like uh, heavy aluminum foil. That's basically what it is. That's so interesting. So like, you know, silver plated wise, what would this be worth, silver plated only? If Part. I was selling this by itself? Well, I mean, like if you're, if you're just melting it, in it. If you're melting it, yeah. Yeah, maybe 12 bucks. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I doubt if there's a half, maybe there's a half an ounce. So of people go home, they weigh this thing, but it thinking takes they got you, all this money. It takes you 20 minutes to get this apart. Yeah. You got to put it on a tray and you hit it with a hammer. Bust this, this piece comes off. Then you got to peel all this off. And think of razor blades. And when you're pulling it off, if it catches your finger, these edges are like razor blades. I can't tell you, I can still feel the cuts how many times I've got cut over the years. Oh, it's like when you buy a sterling silver set of cuttery uh the forks and spoons are fine but i won't pay for the knives it's first of all on the knife it says stainless that means the knife has no value or some will say stainless blade sterling silver handle weighted it's the same idea the handle has got weight like this in it with a metal post in it and you've got to peel that off and you lose you know i pay like three dollars a piece for a knife because it takes you 15 minutes per knife to take out the blade, smash it, bang it, and try and get out as much of the plaster as you can. Super, then you gotta melt it. Super good info. Thanks, guy. Appreciate yeah. you. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular.
You know, when I was a kid, we did this every day in school, and I believe we need to bring this back a little bit, and I'm going to start right now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.